Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Draw with Rob. With me, Rob Bidolf. Now then, I am a children's author and illustrator. You probably know me mainly from picture books, that's what I've done really up until now in the main. Um, but I have just had my very first chapter book published a month or so ago and here it is. It's called <gasps> Peanut Jones and the Illustrated City. And look, it's like a proper, proper chapter book with loads of words in it and everything. But as you can see, look, lots of pictures. Oh, I like that one. That's one of my favourites. But you can see, yeah, it's very, very heavily illustrated all the way through. And I'm super, super proud of it. So if you like books like um, How to Train Your Dragon or, you know, Harry Potter, things like that, I think you will really, really like this book. It's a fun adventure all about this girl, Peanut. She finds a magic pencil that she realises whatever she draws with that pencil becomes real. So one day she draws a door which she can open because it becomes real. She walks through it and finds herself in an illustrated city and lots of adventures happen thereafter. Um, but as I say, I'm mainly known for my picture books and I've just had a brand new picture book published literally a couple of days ago. And it's October now, right? By the time, you know, at the time of recording, we're in October and I always think we are allowed to start talking about Christmas in October. My birthday is in October actually and I think after my birthday that's the time to start talking about Christmas which is handy because my new picture book da 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 it's an odd dog Christmas so it's another story for the odd dog out which I think is my most popular um, picture book so it's a lot of fun this book I will tell you a little bit more about it when I put up my my Christmas um, videos uh, nearer nearer the big day itself but look, as you can see it's full of nice Christmassy drawings. So check that one out, it's available now to get wherever you get your books from. Um, as is the newest Draw With Rob book, which is called Monster Madness, which is especially relevant for this video today because today's video is a special one for Halloween. Halloween isn't it so we're gonna do something a bit Halloweeny today and this book is quite Halloweeny actually so you should check it out it's full of monsters um, and uh, and I was thinking right what can I draw for Halloween because we've done in the past we've done a skeleton and we've done pumpkins that kind of thing I was thinking what can we draw what can we draw and then I sort of got to this page Frankenstein's Dr Frankenstein's laboratory and I thought oh, why don't we draw I want to show you how to draw a little bat Bats are great Halloweeny things, aren't they? So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to show you how to draw a little cute bat that maybe when you've done it, you can cut it out and stick it up on your window to show everybody outside that you love Halloween and you're happy for trick or treaters to turn up at your house. Maybe you can draw more than one bat. Cover your window with bats. They're quite easy, so you might be able to do that. Right, let's start, shall we? Just in case you haven't done a Draw With Rob video with me before, this is how they work. Lots of people tell me they don't think they're very good at drawing I say that's nonsense everybody can draw some people just need a little bit of help with the order that we do the drawing in and that's where I come in because what we are going to do is break this drawing down into bite-sized pieces vampire bat bite-sized pieces and uh, so I'm gonna do a little bit of my drawing here on my piece of paper then you can pause this video and you can copy what I do Then start me up again I will draw a bit more pause me you draw I draw, you draw, 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 I draw, you draw. And at the end, we're going to end up with a lovely drawing of a lovely Halloweeny bat. Okay? And you're going to be very proud of it, I promise you. So, the very first thing we are going to do. So, what are you going to need? What are you going to need? I should probably tell you that first, shouldn't I? You need a piece of paper. You're going to need a pen. That's about it, really. Maybe something to colour with a bit later on, if you like. But don't worry too much about that. Let's start, shall we? So, I want you to start right in the middle of your piece of paper, okay, right in the centre. I want you to draw like a sort of uh, sort of half circle, like that. So not it's, it's not really a semi. Is it a semicircle? I don't know. It's a semicircle. Is it called a semicircle when you draw the line at the bottom? I don't know. Let's just call it a half circle. That will do, won't it? <laughs> right in the middle of your piece of paper, like that. Then. From this right hand end, I want you to come down into a slightly sharper point in the middle, like that. And then let's do the same over here. So we're doing a sort of upside downy teardroppy type shape to start with. 
Okay? Nice and easy start, isn't it? Then, I think we're gonna we're gonna wake our vampire bat. I don't know if it yeah, this is a we're gonna do a bat. We're gonna call this a vampire bat, okay, this drawing. Not just a bat, a vampire bat. And we are gonna wake our vampire bat up quite early on in this drawing. Sometimes I leave it till nearer the end to do the eyes, but this time we're gonna do it right at the beginning. Now my vampire bat, I have decided, is going to be a cute one, a friendly one. So I'm going to do two nice, big, round eyes. Now you guys can do whatever you want. If you want to make your bat look a bit more of a kind of evil vampire bat, what you do, instead of drawing a whole circle, you just sort of do a half circle with a diagonal, you know, stopping there, with a diagonal line, to make him look a little bit frowny. But I want to do mine nice and happy. So inside each of those, I'm going to add a smaller circle like that. Let's give him shiny eyes, shall we? We're going to add a little circle inside that tiny circle. Then we're going to add a tiny circle inside the little circle, I should say. Like that. And there we go. Two little vampire bat eyes. Because our bat is going to be a happy bat, Let's give, let's give him a smile. Now our smile is going to come all the way across the face. So we're going to come all the way across, underneath the eyes, and then up the other side, like that. Okay? And because he's happy, let's add, you know, my little theory about eyebrows. The key to drawing smiling characters is the eyebrows. We're going to add eyebrows quite a long way above the eyes like that to make our vampire bat look extra cheerful. Doesn't really look that much like a mouth, does it, at the moment? So what we're going to do to help that, we're going to add vampire bats, right? They have vampire teeth. Do you know what? I don't know if in real life they have <laughs> pointy vampire teeth. They must do. They must do, mustn't they? Um, shall I tell you a couple of vampire black bat facts? First of all, they don't bite humans in the neck, turning them into vampires. That isn't true. They are, they do suck blood. Oh, no, actually, do you know what? They don't suck blood. They lap blood up. What they do, it's usually cows and big animals like that, I think, that they go for. They'll fly down, they'll bite them, but bite them with their little fangs, and then they will sort of lick the blood up, the blood that comes out, and that's what they kind of feed on. But they don't sort of fly up to humans, bite them in the neck and turn them into vampires. That's not true, people. Sorry about that. Sorry if you were hoping to be bitten by a vampire bat so you could have special vampire powers. But it's not true. I wonder if cows turn into vampire cows. <gasps> You know what that's a good idea for a picture book note to self write vampire cow picture book right where were we yes fangs we need to draw the fangs here we go so this is how we do it at this end of the mouth we're gonna add a nice fang like that so sort of like an upside down triangle at each end of the mouth there we go oh cute i'm liking this little vampire bat already okay Let's give him a little tuft of hair to make him extra cute. So what we do, we just add a few little lines, a little loop like that, to give him a little tuft of hair, make him look even cuter. And then one of the cutest things about bats, I think, is their big bat-like ears. So what we're going to do here is, just above that eyebrow on the right, we are going to draw a curved line that comes quite a long way up, like that. And then it's going to come right back down like that. So it's sort of like a leaf shape on top of our vampire's head. Then, of course, we need to do one on this side too. Like a mirror image, like that. There we go. Nice big vampire bat ears. Let's do the inside bit. Another leaf shape inside for the little ear, what do you call it? The ear lining, I guess. <laughs> Is that what it's called? That's what I always call it. It's probably not what it's called, is it? And there we go. That is the body part of our vampire bat. Pretty easy, right? I told you it was easy. But of course, bats, they're most famous. Well, I guess they're most famous for their... Vampire bats are famous for their fangs, but all bats are really, really famous for their bat wings, aren't they? Because they have to fly. Do you know bats are the only mammals, only mammals that can fly? Did you know that? I didn't know that until I did a little bit of research for this video. And also, while we're at it, um, shall I tell you some more vampire facts? They can live for more than 30 years. 30 years. They live for a long time, vampire bats, don't they? And um, what else? Um, oh, 
Not only are they the only mammals that can fly, but bats make up a quarter of all mammals. A quarter of all mammals are bats. Is that right? Can that be right? I read that this morning. I'm not sure that could be right. Is it right? Rob, come on, education station. Is that fact correct? There we go. Now you will know that I'm either right or wrong with that fact. <laughs> right, wings. Yes, they're famous for the wings. Let's do the wings. Right, first thing we need to do, but we're gonna do this wing first on this side. We This curve here of the ear, we are gonna follow that curve from just below it. We're gonna follow it all the way around like that till we get just above it, okay? That is the first part of our vampire bat wing. Then from there, we are gonna curve around and down. We're gonna go right to the edge of our piece of paper, like that. So we've done one curve up there and then one sort of curving down there. And then this is the fun bit. We are gonna add four kind of curves like that to make our vampire bat wings. The first one is gonna be the biggest one. So we're gonna come out and go in like that. Then we are gonna come out and go in again like that. Slightly smaller, you see there. They're getting smaller each time out into there and then finally we're gonna go right up to there like that there's one of our bat wings now we're gonna try and do a mirror image of that exactly our drawing is going to be quite symmetrical today if yours isn't symmetrical don't worry about it at all as I always say it's those little imperfections that make give our drawings character and charm so don't worry about it if it's not perfect but let's try and get it as symmetrical as we can so I'm going to do exactly the same do it in exactly the same order that I did that wing I'm going to do this wing in the, in the same order that wasn't a very good sentence I am going to draw this wing in exactly the same order that I did that wing I'm just gonna do it watch what I do copy what I do here we go curve around the ear like that till we get just above it then we're going to come down towards the edge of our piece of paper in a slight curve like that then we're going to do the big one it goes whoop, around like that slightly smaller one coming around here going back towards our bat's head then a little one in there and then last but not least the tiny one there we go that joins up to our bat's head and then the last little bit of ink work that we need to do here, we're just gonna add very thin lines coming up from each point. Sort of go up towards our bat's little arms, but not touching. We're just gonna stop it just there. Because their wings, I always think their wings look like they're sort of made of leather, don't they? And I think having these sort of little creases kind of accentuates that fact somehow. I don't really know why. But there we go. Basically, that is our little cute Halloween bat. And all we need to do now, really, is color him or her in, okay? So, bats, they're like black, right? Pretty much black or brown. But this is Draw With Rob. So do you know what? Go for it. Whatever color you wanna do your bat, you do it. Your bat could have multicolored rainbow wings, that might be quite nice. Um, it could be bright blue, it could be pink with yellow spots. I don't, I don't mind. The more creative, the better, I say. I'm gonna stick, as I usually do, I'm gonna stick to the traditional colors, which are black and gray. Um, I might add a little bit of pink here and there in the ears, maybe a little bit of red around the fangs, who knows? But you do whatever you like. The rules we draw with Robar, there ain't no rules. I'm gonna go into super speed mode to color mine in, so I will see you back here in about 20 or 30 seconds, okay? You ready? Jolly good, here we go. Three, two, one, let's go. There we go. There is my finished, cute vampire bat. What do you think? Pretty cool. I hope yours. I hope you're happy with how yours has turned out. I'll just tell you a few little things that I did here. Well, as we've already established, bats are mammals, the only flying mammals. They make up a quarter of all mammals, I think, if I got that fact right earlier. I can't remember. Um, 
Uh, so I've added a few little kind of vertical lines on my bat's body, a little bit on the ears as well, just to make the bat feel a bit furry, because mammals have got hair, haven't they? So a little bit furry, as we know, bats are a bit furry. With the wings, I've added, so you see, do you remember when we draw dinosaurs, we add sort of little dots and spots and circles and things on their skin to make it look a bit sort of like a lizardy, um, sort of snake skinny sort of texture? Well. Do you remember I said the bat's wings, they sort of almost look a bit leathery? It really helps if you just add a few dots and spots here and there on the bat's wings. It really helps with that sort of weathered texture that those wings have. So it's a very easy way of kind of adding that effect to your bat drawing. I've added some little pink lining bits in the ear, a bit of sort of greeny blue shading around the eyes just to make them a bit more three dimensional. And of course I added some little red blood spatters on the end of my vampire bat fangs so that's pretty much it the last thing that we have to do one of the most important things is we need to sign our drawing so that everyone knows who has created these wonderful works of art there we go i've done a full signature today how's that what do you think pretty good little kiss there at the bottom um and there we go there is our vampire bat now i would love to see your halloweeny pictures this is how i get to see them you have to get your grown up to take a picture of your drawing and then if they post it on social media using this hashtag, the draw with Rob hashtag, that way I will get to see your drawing and I cannot wait to see them. I'm hoping for some multicolored um, bats, but if they're all black, that's great. It will look very nice in my little Halloweeny grid that I will put together at the end of the week. Um, what else can I tell you about? Oh yes. You remember I mentioned my little draw with Rob, this book, the Monster Madness book? Well, we've even made some monstery t-shirts, um, which you can buy. And not just t-shirts, do you call it apparel? I think you call it apparel, like hoodies and sweatshirts too. Um, and it's called the Little Monsters range. So if you're feeling especially um, inspired after this Halloween drawing and after Halloween, you want a little monster t-shirt for your little beasties, then you can find them uh, here at this website here. You can find all those t-shirts um, and they, there's some that look like this and this and there's even one that looks like this so check them out right i think that's about all we've got time for i'm gonna be back very soon with another draw with rob video if you want to the best way to to know when there's going to be a new Draw With Rob video coming out. Well, the first thing to do is probably subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're watching on YouTube. Just click that little bell button thing down there as well and that'll give you a notification when a new video drops. Um, but also, you might want to sign up to my free, spam-free newsletter, parents. If you just go here to this website here and sign up for my newsletter totally free then I will email you when there's a new video coming out and you'll also get emails about special offers and you'll be the first to hear about my live events when tickets go on sale for them so you can come and see me and that sort of thing so it's probably worth signing up for I'm not going to bombard you with spam and advertising I promise um, it will just be stuff that you might be interested in so sign up for that totally free and that's the best way to get news about my draw with Rob stuff and all my book stuff and everything like that listen I've loved showing you how to draw this bat on Halloween today. Um, I hope you enjoy your Halloween, whatever it is you're doing, whether you're going out trick-or-treating. Remember, only go and knock on the doors of houses that have got pumpkins outside. They're the ones that are taking part in our little trick-or-treat game. So don't bother people without pumpkins. Um, but I hope you have fun, whatever you do. Wrap up nice and warm. It's always chilly, isn't it, on Halloween? Um, and oh I should when I say Halloween I'm meant to do the sp spooky voice aren't I let's try it again um yes I hope you have fun on Halloween um <laughs> but it's been fun talking to you today I'm going to be, be, be blah, blah, blah. I'm going to be back as I said very soon with um oh, I'm going to be doing lots of Christmas videos soon so keep an eye out for those in the meantime take care everybody keep on drawing keep on reading and I'll see you soon bye bye <laughs>
don't forget about him. And of course, my favorite, her. So listen, this book is full of puzzles. Um, it's got lots of things where I've started off the drawing and you guys need to finish it off. We have got mix and match monster games in there. We've even got like a monster party invite kit for you to use for your own monster parties. As well as that, we've also packed it full of the regular drawer alongs, all of which you get a little picture frame you can do your drawing in and there's perforated edges for you to tear the pages out, stick them up on your fridge or send them out to your relatives. And then of course, once you finish the book, you qualify for this exclusive monster artist certificate that you get to fill in, frame it and put it up on your wall. Now this book I think is perfect for any little monsters out there. And guess what? It's out now. You can get it right now from wherever you get your books. So go and have a look online or better still visit your local bookshop. Right, I'm gonna go now properly. Let you get on with your day. Thanks so much for drawing along with me. Don't forget, check out this book and I'll see you soon. Bye everyone.